it's your first day on the job as a Coast Guard, and you are still an apprentice, if you will. You are training with a much more experienced Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard tells you there's going to be a boat that's going to come near us, near our, our base, our location, what have you, and it's going to tip over. And I'm not talking about the evergreen thing for those that might be wondering, but we'll get to that in a bit. And it's going to tip over. But just ignore it. Don't take any pictures. Don't do anything like that. It's part of a training exercise for the military. You say, okay, no problem. The boat comes, it tips over and all that. It looks like a, I mean, like a serious issue. I mean, for Christ's sake, a, a boat's tipping over. You know what I mean? And then you start to take pictures of it and stuff like that, even though you're not supposed to. You start sharing it to your friends. You start texting about it, this, this, and that. A couple weeks go by. You head into work one day, and the next thing you know, you're not even on the list. You're not even an employee. You have no pension. You have no benefits, nothing. Everything having to do with your employment with regards to the Coast Guard and the federal government is gone. Just like, bam, completely gone. Now, you'll see why I say this before uh, before we bring this full circle. Now, before I do that, I just want to give a special shout-out to Dues GX and his YouTube video. He's got a great channel, as well as to my friend Chubbs TV. It's Chubbs, C-H-U-B-Z TV. He started his own vlog channel. So again, we got to give back to the community, got to support. If you guys like their videos, then please check them out, as well as Project Knowledge and their t-shirts. The Instagram page, they got some great t-shirts. So let's jump right into it. First off, Project Xerox. Duplicating EBE2's odor for golden ray immolations. Now, here's what's very interesting to begin with. Extraterrestrials in general, except for the ones that seem to be hybridized or look very human-based, they tend to have a, a, a very distinct odor to them after they die. And you might be saying, okay, Dave, that's normal. After everyone dies, you know, we're, we're meat and bones and stuff. It starts to decay and the smell gets worse and worse and things like that. But that's not the case here. When certain extraterrestrials die, their odor can actually be liquefied into certain things that we'll be talking about on Patreon. But anyways, the point here is this. Their odor can be liquefied to the extent in which it affects the heartbeat of the Earth. And so I brought this up in one of last week's episodes that the Earth has a, a rhythmic heartbeat, if you will. Right? Now, odor stands for overextensive deteriorization of EBE remains. And for those who don't know, EBE means extraterrestrial biological entity. Now... This is when we're going to talk about the psychological warfare part and we're going to cover all of it leading up to this because this is more of an analytical episode, but I think it's very important that we do this. So first off, let's take a look at CNN.com. New testimony reveals what happened before the Golden Ray capsized off the Georgia coast, end quote. Now, keep this in mind. The Golden Ray, for those who don't know, we're going to take a look at the actual um, the, the actual definition of it. And let's take a look at community.omtimes.com. There are 12 divine rays of light that emanate from the source creator of this universe. Now, this is not a spiritual episode, guys, but we have to understand the energetic and the anomalistic frequencies that occur here because seriously, this is going to tie back to a lot. They are 12 individuated forms of divine source light that allow the creator to experience itself and manifest all that is in creation. Now, end quote. Before we continue on, when we talk about the creator, creation, and what have you, this could also be categorized as the same concept or conceptualization of us living in a, um, a very mathematical realm or a, a, a matrix tricks or a simulation, if you will. Now, one of the keys of harnessing one of the seven energies of the golden ray here is that, as a matter of fact, if you obtain a certain apparatus, which seems to be the synthetic Merkabas that we'll get to in a second, there are certain direct energy weapons that may in fact allow for certain consciousnesses to succumb to that of a psychological warfare operation. And what I mean by that is this. If we jump back to CNN.com, see how golden ray here is the name of the cargo boat that tipped over, allegedly that was a total accident, which also, by the way, they said they cannot bring it back and, and actually uh, repair it and fix the boat and, you know, bring it to shore and all that because of COVID. Meanwhile, they did that no problem with the Suez Canal because, again, you see how priorities change. But anyways, they throw the words Golden Ray right in front of our faces by allowing us to think that this is nothing by saying, look, well, that's the name of the boat. Why would that be the case, right? Now, if we take a look at uh, Jesuser.com, Maxar satellite imagery shows Golden Ray carrier ship capsizing. That's fancy term for tipping over. Now, you might be saying, Dave, why are you showing me an aerial shot of the boat tipping over? Well, when we take a look at it from above, there seem to be certain anomalistic radio waves within the actual water here, and I'm putting the pictures up right now, that certain individual scientists have examined, not institutional ones, because an institution will never accept this. Certain individual scientists have said, 
using thermal imaging on these photos, there is a certain anomalistic ray that seems to be emitting towards these boats, which seem to be using direct energy weapons. And the reason why I bring this up is because when we take a look at the fact that this boat allegedly had uh, most car uh, cargo, uh, sorry, excuse me, containers on this boat belong to the company Hyundai, the car company, right? Now, here's the interesting thing. George Soros, and this is not like a, you know, George Soros episode or whatever, but we have to call it like it is. George Soros has an extreme extremely amount of subsidiary dummy companies, and this took me a few weeks to find, that actually are invested in Hyundai. Now, did George Soros actually need the Golden Ray ship to be tipped? Now, see already how there's that confusion between the Golden Ray ship and the actual Golden Ray energy? And the reason why I bring this up is because it seems as though this ship needed to tip with a correspondence of the heartbeat, the rhythmic heartbeat of the Earth. Why? The ship was made out of certain aluminum metals that were not within the manifesto of the original man manufacturing documents, which seem to indicate that this ship may in fact contain certain, I don't want to say alien elements, but certain elements that, again, like Jacques Vallée said on Joe Rogan, would cost literally in the trillions of dollars to manufacture at the most isotopic level. So how the hell anyone's doing this, we don't know. But again, that's we'll put that aside. Now, if we take a look at the ship and where certain pieces floated off so far, notice something. Notice how the Coast Guard said, well, we can't do anything about this because of COVID and we'll get to it later on. It's, it hasn't harmed anybody or what have you. While this is happening day by day, hour by hour, guys, I kid you not, there are certain parts of the ship that are floating into the sea and into the ocean. Right. And that's I mean, look, that's not the best thing for the environment, but let's put that aside. People would say, OK, Dave, that happens all the time. But guys, where the pieces are floating to are geometrically aligned with some very recent revelations of certain zones of silence. All right. This seems to be descriptive of the fact that the material on the ship seems to have been some type of self thinking programmable. I don't want to say black goo or programmable matter, but it seems like whatever direct energy weapon made the ship tip over. OK, whatever allowed these certain pieces from the ship metal slash aluminum looking pieces again similar to the curvature of which it seems to be the components and foundational structure of ufos they start dispersing into different parts of the world now if you look at some of the coordinates all right, where these certain metals appeared or uh, dispersed to, they seem to also be the same locations where pulsar signals come from. So let's take a look very quickly at what pulsar signals are, because I think it's very important for us to to understand exactly what they are. According to Wikipedia, if you see here, and I quote, a pulsar is a highly magnetized rotating compact star that emits beams of electromagnetic radiation out of its magnetic poles, end quote. I'll tell you something they got wrong here to begin with. This is not electromagnetic radiation. This is also another form of psychological warfare. They cover it up right in front of our faces. See how they use the word radiation? Do you remember our previous episodes we did about how certain uh, caretakers and certain CIA agents and officers were briefing Ronald Reagan on this type of radiation that seems to be used? So how come this direct energy weapon that seemed to be viewed through different forms of thermal imaging and what have you was pointed directly to this boat, all right, which I don't think is a coincidence, but let's put that aside. Not only that, but the pieces of the boat then fled off into different parts of the sea and the into the ocean where pulsar signals are coming from. Now, pulsar signals are really, as a matter of fact, energetic beams that are used for multiple different purposes. But this time around, the pulsar signals are used, as a matter of fact, to extract some of the odor from the dead extraterrestrial bodies. And I know that might sound ridiculous, but if we take a look at the fact that every single account that we have seen where whistleblowers have said that every time they viewed extraterrestrial bodies when in containment facilities like the one i'm going to give an example of they did not smell but after they just died they smell right now normally speaking we could say, well, you know, because they, you know, maybe a coroner cleaned, cleaned up the alien bodies and what have you. Well, the odor of the aliens, as a matter of fact, is more significant than the actual physical components themselves because the odor, the smell, I kid you not, the smell could actually be extracted into that of a liquid which could function and make some of these ships that humans are trying to reverse engineer work. But here's the thing. The humans have also aligned with a certain alpha draconian race and... More importantly, what we're going to find there is that the race in which they have aligned with is actually trying to teach humans a an inverted form of reverse engineering saying, no, listen, you need this type of liquid for this to work. Now, what we're going to find as well, too, is that this liquid disseminates from the real society, which also seems to be a sort of con concentrated, excuse me, watered down version of what ARC and Taurus LLC seem to be working on with regards to kinetic energy. Now, I'm not saying they play a part in this. I'm just saying it seems to be similar to that. So it seems like certain dead alien body smells, odors are kept and could actually be liquefied, maybe not within the 
the range in which we can visually see and understand, but at the same time may in fact allow us to um, create, I guess we could call a a form of much more energetic, um, I guess we could say offensive capabilities, if you want to call it, right? Now, let's take a look here at this article because I think it's very important that we, uh, that we understand what happened here with regards to uh, this right here. So let's take a look. And this is according to Metro.co.uk. Fidel Castro was shown crashed UFO and frozen alien at Russian equivalent of Area 51. Now, according to multiple witnesses who claim that the Soviets also had an Area 51 style base filled with alien technology, Juan Marie Bras, a lawyer and politician, said that in the years before the fall of the Soviet Union, Fidel had flown to Soviet Russia. All right. And according that uh, and Castro was shown a flying saucer in a fridge with a tall extraterrestrial in it. End quote. Now, here's the thing. The reason why I bring this up is because it seems like it doesn't have to do so much with the keeping certain extraterrestrials within cryosleep. It seems like ultimately what it has to do with here is it has to do with keeping extraterrestrials odors from emanating because the odors emit a certain type of energy that the pulsar waves seem to attract. And it seems like what's happening here is that the pulsar waves are harnessing the heartbeat of the earth and the golden rays of the seven different energies and I guess we could call divine sources that harness the actual simulation of the matrix and they extract the odor from these beings. So what we're going to see here is something also very interesting when we take a look at this document right here and I would like to thank uh, my friend Genius for this. The secret government document and I quote, there is usually only a very small group of inner elite who know the whole story. The pawns would most likely not offer their services if they knew where their actions were taking them in their country. Country. For instance, a CIA asset serving the company for patriotic reasons may in essence be digging their own grave. In reality, selling out to the country that they're trying to defend, selling out themselves, their descendants, and so on to an agenda they don't know anything about. And quote, this is again having to do with the shadow government. When you orchestrate something like this, what ends up happening is that even these CIA agents, even though they may know about aliens, what they don't know is that direct energy weapons are being used to create pulsar signals that extract the odor from these aliens. So it seems like a deal was struck, by the way, between humans, or at least the United States government and certain extraterrestrials that every time an alien died, the humans can keep the body, but the extraterrestrials want the odor back. Now, could it be more than just a smell of odor? Because that is only the way in which our senses can perceive it. Again, just because it smells bad or smells good or has a smell doesn't mean it is only simply a smell. So what we're going to find here as well, too, is that most of George Soros' subsidiaries owned the most amount of inventory on that ship, but that might not be bad, it might not be good, but the point here is this. When we look at the fact that there are so many pulsar signals that are still being emanated and broadcast onto this ship, all right, even at this current time, it's too fishy for it to not be something that is correlated with some type of sacrifice or ritual. Now, here's the next thing I want to show you as well, too. This is going to connect back very, very strongly, by the way. And it's a little bit creepy. I'm not going to lie, but it it's something very necessary. So let's take a look before. This is the West Tribune. Uh, sorry. The News Tribune .com. Before Smallfoot and Bigfoot, native tribes told stories of child stealing creatures of the woods. Now, End quote. Before I go on, I just want to say we will get into this on Patreon much deeper later today in today's upcoming episode. But the point is this. There are ultimately certain extraterrestrials that are using hypnotic and telekinetic, abil uh, telekinetic abilities that we're also going to analyze in tonight's um tonight's patreon episode that seem to correlate with the fact that there is certain energies that are in correspondence with these pulsar waves which is why you see in some cases certain aliens don't have any abilities based on you know the classified intelligence reports when they're being surveilled right they don't have abilities or telepathic abilities or energetic and kinetic based abilities or comp uh, uh, powers if you will within one part of the earth but another part they have it because it seems like these pulsar signals are corresponding with that of the dispersed coordinates of where these cargo ships fell off. Now, how much does George Soros uh, know about this? I'm not sure. I would dare to say to quite a large extent. However, what we can say for certain is that the energy that, that was emanating from this ship was in fact something that was meant to be done on purpose. This ship was never meant to go to shore. 
All right. Now, the next thing I want to take a look at, too, which is very interesting as well, is I want to take a look at a few different revelations that seem to be put right in front of us. So according to healthcareitnews.com, California junks 179 million Medicaid IT modernization project with Xerox. Now, the company Xerox, right? Not Project Xerox. This is another way they throw it in front of our faces. What they're doing here is they're this is a way in which they funnel money. All right, into different operations that cannot be justified by the taxpayers and cannot be also sufficiently provided by the the control of the black uh, the black market cartels and drug markets because again it's a give and take business if the intelligence agencies that have deals with the cartels to fund the black projects start asking for too much it creates an imbalance and balance is more important than anything else in life again like you know hermetic principles as above so below the yin and the yang right. Now, what's interesting, though, is that if you follow the money trail of this 179 million, do you know how many how many uh, cargo ships worth of Hyundai cars, quote unquote, fell off that particular that Golden Ray boat? 180 million. The only difference is that in this headline here, it says 179 million, but the real number was 179.7. So someone clearly took that 0.7 off the top as a uh, it's a money laundering fee, if you want to call it, right? And we see that all the time. I mean, that, that that's nothing new. That happens in crime. That happens in politics. You name it. That money was then funneled to uh, uh, funneled to then. Um Sorry, was then funded to studies such as these ones here, Reason.com. Cultivated meat projected to be cheaper than conventional beef by 2030. Now, you might be saying, Dave, why are you talking about meat and beef? Well, unfortunately, I can't talk about this publicly, but on Patreon, you'll see what I'm saying. What's going to happen here is something for the members you'll see later tonight is going to be very, very um, hard to grasp, let's call it. Anyways... If we take a look here, tiny brains grown in 3D printed bioreactor. I'm bringing all this up not for a, a psychological warfare uh, a analysis. I'm bringing this up because all of these companies, all right, and I'm not going to get specific just because for the sake of time, all of these companies have been receiving funding from Xerox that sits around the $180 million mark. Now, you know what's also interesting that seems to tie all of this back? And I know this might sound like a typical, you know, uh, QAnon conspiracy, if you will, but we got to put that aside. We have to focus on the real issue here. Take a look at this. Clinton Foundation, and this is also thanks to Genius as well, a foundation report made public. They received $180 million in funding, all right, around the same time that the ship tipped over, all right, and also at the same time that these other these other companies receive that same 180 million. But wait a second, how is it that 180 million keeps duplicating over and over again? Because when the money is funneled to that of a holographic pulsar area within the location of which these pulsars are emitted, it then duplicates, hence the name of the project itself, Project Xerox. Xerox means to duplicate or clone or, you know, it become a transhuman, if you will, or synchronize natural synthetic uh, natural biology with legitimately advanced technology right and so what we're seeing here is that the scent that dead aliens tend to give off specifically the ones that are non-human looking the ones that are you know the short grays the tall grays the insectoids their scents seem to be useful to a much larger uh, apparatus or operation that seems to be def uh, defined by the correlation of the political cosmos of the Ashtar command the Galactic Federation you name it so, quick recap here, because we're going to be doing a part two on this, by the way. This is very important. We're seeing George Soros covering up through his company subsidiaries. The Clinton Foundation receiving this type of money. I don't know yet what role they have to play specifically, but we will find out, I guarantee you. On top of that, this Golden Ray boat actually tipping and harnessing the rhythmic heartbeats of the planet to utilize certain alien smells. And it seems like, this is the point I was finally getting to, it seems as though Honda, Hyundai cars, quote-unquote, I say that with air quotes, were not on this boat. You know what was really on the boat? Thousands and thousands of dead alien bodies that needed to drop into the water in order for the pulsars to pick up its odor again odor standing for overextensive deteriorization of ebe remains all right and now as long as these bodies sink into the ocean we've never officially been to the most you know the deepest part of the ocean 95 percent of our ocean hasn't been discovered so it kind of works out well doesn't it and these parts of the boat that seem to you know push off into certain geographical locations did not have any type of you know thin structure they were all very thick almost as if there were certain parts you could fit alien bodies into or even bodies of any kind by the way 
This could also be a murder cover-up as well, too. We don't know. Either way, this looks like a fantastic way to indirectly and very subtly use direct energy weapons to extract certain extraterrestrial we use the word odor but again energies if you will that seem to head back to its home planet or whichever deal the cia or the human colonizations of the galactic federation representatives have made so let me know what you guys think and we will catch you later on today cheers